Hi guys, welcome to another OptoPanner video. Uh, in this one I'm going to show you how a conference organizer can use OptoPanner to schedule in his or her conference. Right. So um, this was actually used by Devox Belgium, uh, Red Hat Summit and Vox Zurich. So here you can actually see the schedule of Vox Zurich which is coming up uh, in uh, March. And what you can see there is that what actually what Optoplan actually did is for each of these talks that you see here, he decided which room and which uh, time slot it should be based on a number of constraints such as speaker availability, uh, conflicts between um, two talks that, that are handling the same topic or in the same track and should not be scheduled at the same time and things like that. Right. So let's see how we can quickly get this schedule with Optoplanner uh, by using our uh, uh, by using the REST API integration. So the first thing we do is we go to OptoPlanner itself, so to OptoPlanner.org itself. You can actually um, you just go to the to the URL uh, OptoPlanner.org and then you click on the big green button here to download the zip file. And um, I'm just going to skip that for you, but uh, once you've downloaded the zip file, you'll actually get uh, to, and you unzipped it, this is what you'll see, right? So this is the the, the zip distribution. If you open examples there, you can just click on run examples.sh and I'm just going to run that now. Uh, you need Java, of course, and when that starts up, you'll get to see this basically, right? So this is the OptoPlanner examples UI. And of course, we're only interested in the conferencing, conference scheduling example, because that's the one we actually use to schedule these conferences. So I'm going to go ahead and open that one. Okay. Um, yeah, here it goes. Uh, here you can see a number of things. On the left, we have some uh, data sets as examples, which is great if you're not uh, a conference organizer of DevOx or Vox Zurich, because you can use those as inspiration and, and, and start from those. However, in the, in the latter case, in the DevOx and Vo De Vox uh, Zurich case, you can simply import from the CFP, so you don't have to input the speaker names uh, and talks and so forth yourself, which is much, much faster. So as you can see here, um, it asks us for the CFP REST URL, right? So how do we find out the CFP REST URL? Well, let's take a look. Um, so this is the, uh, over here, we have the call for papers app for um, Vox Day Zurich, right? So we, this is actually the start of the URL. And if we then simply take this URL and we attach uh, api.conferences behind it, right? So we get this URL uh, and we call for that. This is the request that we'll get. So I'll just refresh it. You'll see this is the response that I get. And from here, we can actually know the name of our conference. So this is actually 19 edition. So we'll just take this URL, I'm going to copy that, and we're going to put that into the URL here. Okay, and then I just paste that in there. Uh, I'm going to show you also what it does in the terminal, just so you can see what, what it's, it's doing. I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, it's now importing from that. So instead of typing all those speakers, I now get them, right? So let's take a look at that. Um, so uh, let's take a look at the what it's currently loaded in memory of this application, right? So uh, this is actually what it loaded. And you can see we have all the time slots here. We have the rooms here. So make sure before you do this, you have to find your time slots correctly in a DevOx CFP app as well as your rooms, or this will not show up uh, as well. Um, we have the, so you can see some rooms are unavailable at certain times. Uh, we have the speakers here, right? Uh, do note, so do note that here you can also fill in speaker availability. Like for example, this person might not be available on Tuesday morning, uh, but that's not available in this DevOx CFP app. So if you want to add that, you'll have to add that in a minute uh, manually uh, yourself, right? So you can just simply uh, copy paste, for example, the cell, right? And you can just say, okay, uh, this particular person is now unavailable uh, before noon, right? Because um, the speaker is not available then, right? Um, you'll have to save that and reopen that file, of course. So I'm just going to ignore this for now. Um, and then we have the talks. You can see all the talks here. Uh, you can see we have the speakers in there. Uh, we have the team tracks. So we have all information there already. And of course, we can start editing things if we want to have specific extra constraints on, on top of the basic ones, right? I'll just leave that for now and I'm just going to ignore these changes. I'll just solve it. So you can see once we're solving it, um, they, we can 
run it as long as we want but the longer we run it the better score we have and the score is actually what you see here at the bottom it means how many constraints that we're um, you know we're breaking and um, you can see we are not breaking any hard constraints that means that we're not expecting a speaker to be at two places at the same time um, we also make sure that every speaker has 30 minutes be between any two talks and we also make sure that if a speaker isn't available that you know he's not uh, having any talks at that specific time um, okay i think it's stabilized let's take a look at what we get we reopen it and this is a good time to save it probably uh, here at the bottom we have a whole bunch of yellow tabs the last one is probably the most interesting one that gives you a nice view per day on um, on how it uh, on who's scheduling when right who's scheduled when uh, you see now we haven't actually inputted any other extra constraints so it, it might be a bit, little bit different as what we saw in the original schedule um, although it ends up pretty the same okay that's interesting at least for my talk um, so what we, can we now do how can we um, customize this let's say okay this is a good schedule but you know some speakers they attract more people than other speakers and we want them to be in the bigger room right so we can actually accommodate accommodate for that so if we actually go into the oh that's not if we actually go into the talks right so one of the things we can do is we can uh, for example write down uh, the um, that let's say this particular speaker uh, let's pick Mario for now um, this sh he should be in a big room so we're going to say okay um, we are we're, he needs a big room so we're going to create a room tag here a big room right right and um, then of course we're going to go to the rooms and we're going to make sure that we mark which rooms are big and so apparently this one is big so we can just say big room here all right um, now that's one way of doing it um, uh, but another way of doing it is actually just saying okay um, there's actually a constraint if you just say how many twitter followers every every talk uh, the speakers of every talk have i know how many favorite votes the talk has which is in here you can also do it that way if you fill it in here they will also try to put those into a bigger room and then you don't even have to do tags on the rooms so similarly you can do tags on the time slots you can say okay um this one is prime time prime time all right so this particular time slot is prime time well let's say these really just the ones and the one just before lunch a prime time and if you want to do that you can then go to the speakers and say okay um, Aaron Gupta of course we want him to speak at prime time right so that's a required time slot tag then or you can make it a preferred one if you say we'd like to have that happen but we don't uh, require it and of course when you, you when you then need to do is you need to save this uh, preferably in the same directory uh, and then you need to open it from the uh, application to make sure that those constraints are loaded in um, so that's basically it that's how simple it is um, so um, if you want to get started uh, simply go to um, optoplanet.org and click the green button uh, thank you for listening